那个小哥是下一学期的，其实不是刚才那个说正常，正常的，正常的，正常的，嗯，但是有一个印度小哥，印度小哥，哪个印度小哥？刚才那个。Alright, last presentation. Woo! Good morning, everybody. My name is Tom Beach. I'm Jude. I'm Sanke Jaiswal. I'm Jeremy. We are Team Eleven, and this is our ME444 final project, Sakar. <laughs> so soccer, besides the word play, uh, playing soccer with cars, it is a pretty famous concept now. Like there have been some online games, like you can see these are a few of the games, it's like a 2D version of you just pretty much score the goal with your car. And uh, I'm not sure if all of you know, but like the most, one of the most popular games around right now is Rocket League. For those of you who don't know it, uh, I'm just gonna like show a tiny video here. It's a few snapshots from the game. the game is like a virtual game and easier to make the cars fly. <laughs> we would have liked to do that, but um, inspiring from this game itself, since it's a very popular game going around, all the video games, uh, we had proposed the idea back in September of having just a normal car with a, a ball holder that we could use to like push the ball around and manu maneuver it into a goal. Uh, we had initially thought to have magnetic tips, but we canceled that plan because it would be unfair to the other player if one player gap, grabs the ball. Now, Tom will talk a bit about the CAD design. So this is our overall CAD design for the car. All the parts were either purchased or custom 3D printed. Um, so most of the parts were just solid part modeled in Creo. Uh, the gears were modeled in SolidWorks using the gear toolbox and then imported into Creo. And then the body was used um, surface modeling to get that unique shape. Go ahead to the next slide. So this is our, our chassis. This was custom made to incorporate a lot of things like the rear axle holder and the steering mechanism and also a bunch of slots to hold the motors, the batteries, and the servo. Uh, this was really done so that we could place everything. We didn't have to spend as much time or hardware assembling everything later. Um, so our two main mechanisms for the car are first the drive mechanism shown here on the left and that involves an electronic motor a 2.5 to 1 gear ratio, and then the rear axle, which drives the rear wheels. And the other one is our steering mechanism, which we approved much upon from our guided project. Go ahead. So this is just a s simulation of both the driving and steering mechanism. Um, all of the parts beside that were not purchased were made with the Envision Tech 3D printer, except the wheels that we used in different 3D printer for because uh, they required the least accuracy and we were full up uh, to our printing quota on the Envision Tech. <laughs> so this is just the assembly of the car itself. Some things we did involve using a Dremel tool to help sand out parts to get a proper fit and good spinning. Um, and then painting it, we used both glue, some pins to hold the steering mechanism together. On the left you see our drive mechanism and on the right is our steering mechanism. I can show you guys the inside of the car later, but uh, this is just like before we inputted some LEDs. So that's also added after this. So the electronic things, we use the same that we used pre in the previous projects. And the difference is we just put out the breadboard because the, there's a limited of the size. So we just uh, hold it directly with the jump wires. For the control, we use a really nice software, the mobile application called Blink, and then just gonna uh, make a uh, connect with the Wi-Fi, internet, and uh, make control with the uh, control the motor and the servo motor. Yeah. So along with the two cars, we also uh, wanted to make two goalposts so we could play a complete game, um, and we also wanted to incorporate a mechanism into those goalposts, um, and we decided to make uh, the goalposts shoot the ball back out to the playing field once someone scores. And we did this by kind of mimicking uh, kind of a mousetrap mechanism. Um, so kind of swing bar is attached to a torsion spring. 
And then when you pull back the swing bar, um, you can lock it into place. Um, so the general motion is shown here. And then just some close-up pictures of uh, what it looked like when we assembled it. Um, so in the first picture, you can see the torsion spring on the right. And then when you pull the bar back, you can see in the middle picture, in the right picture, that um, you grab that bar with the hook. And then when you push down that lever, that's how you release it. So we could just demonstrate all of that right now. It looks out. So one of the things we did with the custom printed body is we put a little slot in here, which we attached our um, on-off switch to. So that's pretty neat that you can access that without having to take the body off. But I'll go ahead and just show you. The body easily removes, um, and this is what the inside looks like. I can stick it out. And then that's with our installed LED lights. Which ball do you want to use? So uh, we had two balls. Initially, we were going to go with a whistle ball since we thought it's light and hollow, so it'd be easier to push around. But the problem with that is it's too light. So for this demonstration, I'm just going to use a rubber ball, which is, I guess, easier to push around. Just like Rocket League, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, obviously we're kind of limited on space here, so we're trying to be careful um, so we don't fall off the table, because that would be a bad day. <laughs> So basically, then you score and send the ball back into play. So yeah, that's the basic demonstration of how this all works together. Uh, obviously, in the future, we would, could incorporate more cars so you can have teams just like in regular soccer. And the nice thing is, um, right now, with the LD independent parts, you can set up a smaller arena or a larger arena based on how many players you have. Okay. You guys want to go ahead to the next slide? Like you guys saw, there was like a space constraint, and like it's kind of scary to <laughs> have the cars fall off the table. But uh, ideally, this is what we had in mind, and they just recently released the product, uh, Rocket League, co uh, co powered with Hot Wheels, and like they have released the product in the market on November one. So this is pretty much after we had proposed the idea. <laughs> I'm sure they decided before us. Uh, no feelings there, but yeah, they have, they have it out on the market for 180, and this is like a perfect idea of what we had. We tried to get the cars as small like, as we could, but like our components were a little big, and it wasn't like possible to get it any smaller. So ideally, with a higher budget and time, we would have liked to get uh, ideally like those Hot Wheels cars are very small, so it'd be easier to maneuver the ball around and have a proper arena, so that way the goals would not be, uh, like right now the goals aren't held in place since uh, we can't lock them in the state. <laughs> but uh, we'd have an arena and uh, it would have an electronic display of the goal. So Tom will just talk a little bit about the future ideas that we had. So one of the things, we, like we mentioned in our earlier sketch, was that magnetic tip to hold the ball in place. So possibly implementing something like that so um, the ball stays in a little bit better. because. At this point, uh, it's hard to keep the ball in the holder and move it around. Uh, we would want to find some higher power motors so we could get the cars moving a little bit faster, and it would be more of a fun game, either doing that with a, like I said, high power motor or a better gear ratio. Uh, again, we can strain this to fit a size. Increasing the position of the wheels, as I mentioned, that was the only part we couldn't run with the 3D or the Envision Tech printer. Um, so they were just a little bit uneven, and that causes some wobble. So cleaning that up would be great. Um, finding better control, so using the Blink controller with the ESP32 we had from the guided project was convenient, but as you saw, it's not the most precise kind of control mechanism, so 
finding a better one that is used in a lot of commercial RC cars would be great because you can control the car more accurately, makes the game more fun. And then things to improve the goal like adding a release mechanism that just automatically releases the ball when the goal is scored. Uh, fine tuning that spring so we can figure out you know how fast to launch it out. And then possibly like Senkat said, adding a display that shows when you've scored points and how many points you have. So do you guys have any questions? Yeah, I think the um, regarding the RC controller versus the camera versus the mobile phone, I don't think it's a problem with the um, controller. It's probably a combination between um, the actual steering mechanism and also um, the way you design the interface. Probably, uh, uh, I have seen. Yeah, I know, but uh, if you wanna yeah. if you wanna post new try after the project, I don't know why on one of the phones it's mm -hmm. quicker when I turn oh. the servo, and one of the phones it lags. So that was our that okay. was our feedback. Okay. So like I don't know why maybe it's a Samsung and an iPhone. Yeah. So when I do it on my phone, you can see the red car was moving a bit slow, and that was the uh, that was honestly the reason. Uh, if you wanna try it after yeah, the, the presentation, I, I that, that there's some lag. Yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> We've also had some issues because it runs through Wi-Fi with it disconnecting. And so having a different controller that doesn't have to interface through Wi-Fi but directly with the car maybe could help improve some of that reliability. Okay. So it, those are just a few points. And like, uh, like uh, if you buy a product, you wouldn't probably want to configure it to a certain Wi-Fi since we had to code this specifically for a certain phone and a certain Wi-Fi wi router. So the idea is to have a, a different type of connection for the remote. But in terms of the real market, I feel that uh, uh, connecting to Bluetooth or something is uh, I need controlling the phone is very appealing for the user that you do on traditional RC phones, especially nowadays they have a kid's phone controller. I mean, mobile. That is the phone. Comments. Yeah, so I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, also, um, do, do you have any improving plan for the GOATs? Because right now they are like um, manually triggered. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was saying an automatic yeah. release system. Uh, so that when the ball goes in, it'll sure. trigger it and it'll just... Also, you, you want to integrate it together with the controller interface so that you can just... Yeah, so uh, like I said, uh, the ideal situation would be having one arena. Yeah. So uh, like you can see right now, we have four different products if you look at the items. So we have two electronics uh, in these cars and we had a certain budget. So we couldn't really uh, input another battery uh, uh, and arena everything in the up. So yeah, the, the idea though to what you're saying was having an arena with uh, electronics at the bottom that would connect to both the goalposts and then uh, there would be a sensor so if the ball entered the detected by the sensor then the mechanism would release through a servo motor that would lift the hook. But budget. <laughs> Thank you guys for your time.